All right. Um, we have a uh, fun little uh, tie-in from an old example. So I'll go ahead and note everything there. But our statement reads, Two concentric shells carry uniform a uniformly distributed charge plus Q at radius A and negative Q at radius B greater than A, and they are immersed in a uniform magnetic field B equal B naught Z hat direction. A. Find the angular momentum of the fields with respect to the center. Okay. And then B. Now that the magnetic field is, or now the magnetic field is gradually turned off, find the torque on each sphere and the resulting, uh, oops, and the resulting angular momentum of the system. All right, what we need to know, same thing as last time, momentum density and angular momentum density. All right, let's go ahead and doodle it out. Okay, so we were told that we had a uh, charge Q at the inner shell radius A, charge negative Q at the outer shell radius B. Uh, the distance C just highlights that it has a thickness that holds it, but we don't need to worry about that. B is the, uh, the magnetic field is the green arrows going up, indicating the Z direction. So a little graphic for you, nothing too crazy. All right, so for part A, Gauss's law gives us the electric field uh, in between the uh, shells. So if we look at Gauss's law, integral E dot DA over is equal to Q enclosed epsilon naught. Well, surface area is four pi R squared. And then for in between, we saw that there was a positive charge on the inside shell. So that's why we go to positive Q there, epsilon naught, since that was the only charge enclosed. Very important there. And so we, oops, excuse me. So we see that E is equal to Q over four pi epsilon naught, one over R squared in the R hat direction, okay? Now, given that B is equal to B naught in the Z direction, thus G, the momentum de linear momentum density, we can find a cross product and uh, plow it through. Again, we see that the Q over 4 pi epsilon naught and 1 over R squared, all that is a constant. Epsilon's, epsilon naught cancels, so we're good there. And now we're just left with the cross product of uh, R and Z, um, which we'll go ahead and hold off on evaluating that so we can ev use a trick, a vector identity trick here soon. Uh, pretty clever, I'd say. But let's proceed before I get ahead of myself. So since we know what the... Uh, angular momentum density is, and we want to find angular momentum, we need to integrate that over all the space. So big L is equal to the integral of little l d tau, okay? And we know little l is r cross g, so we plug everything into the brackets. Here r is just some spatial vector r in the r hat direction, and we see that we get q b naught over 4 pi r squared, so we get a cancel. Well, we're going to have to, uh, the d tau have something to say about those factors of r's, but we see that the one factor of R cancels from the R R hat and the one over R squared, so that cancels down. Um, but also we see that once we plug in D tau, the R squared actually cancels, so we're good just to leave that original R there. And that's uh, important to simplify soon. But the real highlight of this is that we need to find out what R cross parentheses R cross Z is. Okay, now notice that we have a double product here, okay? And we can go back to our uh, vector identities on, or the triple product identities on these things. Which we said was, if we have the double cross product on it, that we have r hat times the dot product r and z minus z times the dot product of r and r. Okay, so since we know what the dot product of r and r is, it's up to us to find out what the dot product of r and z is, and then somehow finagle our way backwards and uh, let the magic begin. So since we know that r dot z is cosine theta, okay, if we go back to the fact that r hat was composed of x, y, and z components, z component only had a cosine on it. So go back and watch that again. But also we know that the dot product of something in itself is one. Nice to know. All right. Um, but by inspection, we know that l has to be in the z direction. So we pick off the z component of r, okay? This is a little bit nitpicky, and if you don't understand why, you got to remember that conservation has to work to where they cancel each other out. So if the field is applied in the z-direction, it has to be uh, working against it. Um, it can def this, all these things can definitely get intertwined, so be very careful on how to migrate with that. But based on that last, um, that last part where we have r hat, cosine theta minus z hat, 
since we know we're looking in the z direction now, the z component of this does cosine times cosine minus 1. And then we can plug that through all the way to uh, and then substitute in with Pythagorean identity to negative sine squared. This trick, by the way, is used a lot, so don't be alarmed if you see it again. Um, that being said, you plug that in and simplify the uh, integral down, and you get uh, 2 pi from the phi integral. You get, uh, you know, that 4 thirds from the, uh, from the pi's from the uh, sine cubed integral. Uh, the negative comes out front, and then the radial part of that just goes to b squared minus a squared over 2. Nothing too alarming, but the, the whole part of finding the direction of L is definitely the critical part here because that allows you to simplify the integral. And then you just plug in Z back in. Um, again, I'll, I'll have to talk more about that because that's a trick used a lot. Now for part B, the change in magnetic field induces an electric field. Okay, so we have, you know, the EMF and back EMF, all the things from Chapter 7 now coming back in effect here. So if we're assuming symmetry about the z-axis, which we have that, E would equal negative S over 2 dB dt in the fiat direction. Okay, again, because the torque is making it rotate in the z-direction. So from that, the force is equal to QE on a patch of area dA. So if we're looking at dF, we can find that pretty quickly by uh, multiplying sigma of the surface patch, E times dA. Um, so that would be the Q in effect. And the torque on this is what well, we just have to take the uh, cross product to S dot uh, S cross DF and the net torque on a sphere at radius A using S equal A sine theta S hat direction. Again, these uh, unit vectors are going to come back and be very spicy. And what we need to realize is that since we're at radius A, the sign tells us polarly, I believe it's the polar angle, polarly where we're at, at what, uh, radi at what radian measure from the top of the sphere all the way down. Okay, so that's why the sign comes into effect. We've seen it before on the other spinning sphere problems or shell problems, so be aware that that's what they're pulling it from. So N at A is equal to the integral DN. Plug it on through, take the cross product accordingly. Notice very carefully that we have the cross part of S hat and phi hat. So be careful with that. That goes to Z hat. Um, and then we see that we have A's canceling once we plug in what sigma is. And the charge on the surface is divided up by the surface area. So that's why we get sigma is Q over 4 pi A squared. The A squares cancels with the DA area. And uh, yeah, just solve it through as you would expect for a... Uh, double it or a surface integral nothing too crazy and if we apply a similar task here we get that nb is equal to the same thing except we have a negative q on it so we have a double negative which cancels and so if we add those two things together what we actually see is that we get q over 3 db dt b cubed or b squared minus b a squared in the z at direction so the total angular momentum delivered to the sphere is well now you got to take the time uh, integral with respect to this uh, total uh, torque and we see that the two um, time elements for db dt and the dt, uh, dt from the integral cancel and if you remember we originally had a b field so the lower limit is b naught and then we go to zero so the upper limit is zero and thus we see what we have here with that negative sign coming through hence we get negative one third q b naught b squared minus a squared in the z at direction that's pretty darn cool i love seeing how consistent this stuff can be both mechanically and by the fields